part, let's get more on China's agriculture sector with Aidan Connolly. He's the chief innovation officer of the biotech company Alltech. Aidan, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Aidan, China's farming and agriculture productivity has in the past lagged behind that of developed countries. Why is that? Traditionally, of course, China was not just uh, focused on producing food, but also in retaining a uh, fair number of people living on, on farms. That has changed dramatically, I think, particularly in the last couple of years, and we're seeing some extraordinary changes in agriculture. Well, to your point, about 45% of China's population, around 630 million people, as of the last year, were making a living from agriculture, and a need to keep those jobs has prevented China from automation and robotics. But we are seeing a change in that now. Why is that? I think that um, some of the concerns about food safety undoubtedly are part of the drivers. We also see that it's extremely important to produce food economically, otherwise China is going to find itself importing from other countries. So some of those are driving some extraordinary changes, as I've mentioned. For example, we had uh, as many as, as Sao heard of 50 million pigs. Those are 50 million reproducing pigs. Um, that has been cut to less than 36 million in the space of two years. We see equally the size of farms increasing dramatically. So I think the government has a policy, a very clear policy, to increase the size and scale of farming in China. Well, modernization is a big focus. So how can China's farming infrastructure be modernized? What are the key areas of improvement? China has some tremendous opportunities. Uh, one is that it can basically leapfrog some of the technological developments that the other countries have gone through in a stepwise manner. And by that, I particularly think that the use of things such as drones, uh, robotics obviously will be a big part, automation, as you mentioned already, sensors, the use of big data, uh, and understanding genetics and genomics will be absolutely critical to raising the productivity of these farms, wheat, corn, grains, rice, of course, and indeed meat, milk, uh, all of these will see big gains in the next few years. Well, currently, uh, GMOs or transgenics are not allowed in China. Do you see a change there? Is that necessary? Um, the Chinese government have clearly indicated that they are open to the idea of biotechnology. That was mentioned in the last five-year plan. But when it comes to concretely approving organisms, specifically, as you mentioned, transgenic organisms, uh, they have been very slow. I think that with um, the traditional transgenic GMOs, that is going to continue to be a problem. But the ad, uh, advent of the new technology, CRISPR, that's C-R-I-S-P-R, particularly the CAS-A9 uh, form of it, will undoubtedly see, us, see some huge improvements very quickly. In effect, that well, means that instead of introducing foreign DNA into the, into the plant, we'll see just a rearranging of that DNA. And I think that's much more acceptable from a consumer perspective. Is that what uh, the CRISPR technology does? Is that what transgenics are about? If you could just explain a little bit more. Transgenics are effectively where you mix the DNA from different species. So in the case of traditional GMOs, we took the DNA of insects or viruses or bacteria and we inserted into plants. Uh, when, when they have surveyed Chinese consumers, 85% have said they're uncomfortable with that technology. Transgenic does not introduce foreign DNA. Um, sorry, excuse me, CRISPR does not introduce foreign DNA. And as such, it seems as though that's going to be much more accepted. Right. Now, Aidan, Chinese farmland is owned by the state and the right to farm the land is leased to rural residents. Now, recently, rural residents have been allowed to transfer those farming rights to others. But there's been criticism that larger farms are struggling to get the financing necessary to increase their output. How much of an issue is this and how can that be addressed? I think that the financing issue is undoubtedly a underlying challenge for the consolidation of agriculture and for larger organizations in China, uh, both Chinese and foreign. Mm -hmm. um, we have been very involved with the development of a dairy farm in China in partnership with Nestle, which has been successful. And we're in the process of doing the same thing with a very large pig farm, which will demonstrate what can be done. But financing, of course, as you mentioned, is a challenge. I think we are going to see 
China moving agriculture with these new technologies into parts of the country that have not previously been involved in agriculture, and those, I believe, will be financed much more easily, particularly uh, with government help. All right, thank you so much for your insight, Aidan Connolly, Chief Innovation Officer at Altec.